Welcome to another edition of First and Ten with Texas Wesleyan Rams coach Joe Prudhomme. I'm Jimmy the St. Christopher. Rams blew out Wayland Baptist out in Plainview 59-16 to on Saturday. 24-0 at the end of the first period. 31-zip at the end of the first half. They held the Pioneers to a minus 20 rushing. Rams now 4-1 overall, 3-1 in the SAC. Coach, how much did this bye week help the club, especially after losing to Ottawa in that close game a couple weeks ago? You know, I think it helped us quite a bit, actually. We, we got back to some fundamental stuff that we hadn't worked on, you know, because of getting ready for games and you get into schemes sometimes and we were able to get back to our roots a little bit, work on some fundamentals. But, you know, like I said last week, we... This week, this past week, we had some edgy practices. You know, they were, they were kind of, everybody was a little short on their, on their patience and, and tempers flared a little bit. But, you know, they were just ready to go again. They're anxious to play. And, and I think coming through the loss and then having, you know, the game come up afterwards, it was, they were ready to, to play. They were ready to play the Sunday after the Ottawa game. And the fact that we had to wait, I think, made them a little more anxious and, and, and pent up. And it worked out. I mean, they, they came out with a lot of energy, wanted to make a statement, started fast, and, and finished even faster at the end. So. You had quite a escapade, a trip on out <laughs> to the West. Do you care yeah, to talk Yeah, about that? It, was, it was a nightmare. You're trying to forget it. No, it was, it's fine. It was a nightmare. We went out there, and um, our second bus, which the defense was on, they ended up, uh, the bus quit working, basically. It was like going 20 miles an hour, and then it would ramp up to 40 miles an hour, then back down to 20, and... They were trying to troubleshoot it. They were trying to do all these things, and um, the poor driver was hitting every button and, and going through whatever to try to make it work. It didn't work. Uh, we had to line up another bus to come pick us up. That didn't work out because they passed like two ships in the night. Uh, you know, the thing that really bothers you about that is you've got to get these guys fed. You know, they've been on the road, ended up being eight hours on a five-hour trip. And so they were pretty anxious. I was pretty anxious. Uh, the Golden Corral people in Lubbock love you guys. They, um, they held us out till 827. Our guys walk in starving. They're ready to start putting away the food, and, and the manager was so gracious. She just took care of it. And So then through the night, we didn't know if the bus was going to be repaired or not. I kept getting mixed reports on, you know, it's this part, oh, now it's this part, oh, it's, it's running, oh, we're not sure. You know, it was pretty, pretty pins and needles there for a bit. Uh, but So it was so good to get to the field and just have a, a football game. And... The, uh, like I said, the Golden Corral people were great. The hotel people were fabulous in helping us. They were arranging their vans to take us in case the bus wasn't ready. Ended up, we had to take a different shuttle bus out. They repaired the bus, and then it showed up at the game. So, you know, it was, uh, it was some tense moments, man. You can, you can, you can, you can kind of negotiate and, and navigate hotels and food. You get into transportation, it's, it's a non-nego, it's just either you're, you're good or you're not. And, so it made for you know, another chapter in the book <laughs> of, of what's going on with transportation. So, but it was yeah, all good. As a leader, you can't like, go and start yelling at people and no. turning tables and kicking mm -hmm. things. You have to you know, be firm right. but yet positive right. you know, right. As, right. as a leader. You've got to be, well, and you got to be plan A, plan B, plan C, and then there's got to be the oh my goodness plan at the end of it. Um, and that's where I was coming from is, you know, I was firm with them, but I wasn't, I wasn't ugly or rude. Or I just, you get, what is our plan if this doesn't work? Okay, that, that's going to be not happen. Okay, plan B is out. So we're C, and you've got to get it, all, everything lined up. So we had planned that actually up to the four different alternative plans, uh, feeding-wise and transportation-wise, to even get them taken care of. Um, but it all ended up working out. The people at the hotel were fabulous. They were going to shuttle us over. And that's, they don't have to do that. I mean, but they were. That's a, another 50-mile 50 minute drive for them and so I was I was just really appreciative of, of the people in Lubbock they were very hospitable and and really helping us out and Golden Corral too I know I've been bailed out by them a couple of times I mean on the you road. think about it you're 827 <laughs> and you're waiting on your team to still get there uh, the second half the first half was already there and already eaten the manager I just explained what had gone on she goes we're going to stay open for you guys trust me we will get a section off to the side we'll clean the rest of the restaurant we'll leave the food out and I said, well, there won't be much left probably when they get here. <laughs> They've been riding for eight hours, and they're pretty, uh, you know, they're pretty uh, pent up, and they're going to be ready to, to eat. So, and they did. They wiped out everything, and it was, it was great. They were very gracious. So I was uh, appreciative for that. And go back to the game. When you get a big lead like that, yeah. do you, Fran, coaches, do you start 
changing plays or adding anything new or different with a big lead like that? Not really. I mean, because we had jumped up in a hurry, we jumped up because our special teams and defense were really, you know, set in short fields or scoring themselves. Uh, and so you want to, for three quarters, you want to drop that hammer down as much as you can and score because you never know what's going to happen. That you, if you start changing and get overly conservative, they can then come back on you. Then you lose momentum, and it's really hard to regain it. So for three quarters, we were going to go as hard as we could. Um, and if it's working, why change it? You know, they were really uh, bent, and, and they were set on trying to stop the run. They did a good job against our run. I mean, they did. So we made some adjustments throwing the ball, and Dale was sharp, and, and uh, Fran was in the, in the offensive coaching staff were great on taking advantage of some things they were doing. As you mentioned, Dale had a nice game, 11 yeah. at 18, yeah. 261 yards, three TDs. Cole Francis saw some time. How did you see his yeah. performance? I thought Cole did real well. Um, he and Carson Rogers. You know, Carson's the number two, Cole's the number three. It was an opportunity for us to play Cole at this point, um, and he really, I mean, he was excited to do it, and he came out there and did very well. Uh, you know, and, and Carson's always real, real steady. So, you know, I thought Cole did well. Uh, I was Frankly, I was a little surprised that he came out as confident as he was. That's the first time he's, he's gotten out there uh, in a college game, and he looked like he'd been there before. Uh, and playing in a big program like Katie Tompkins will do that. I mean, he's, he's been in front of big crowds. He's played in the big, with big-time people and uh, came out and executed at a high level. I was, I was very pleased with how he played. And Caleb McKinney, big game, three catches, yep. 112 yards, yep. couple of TDs. Yep. Normally, don't talk about him. Size him up for us. You know, he had a real good, uh, uh, a real good game. He was playing the position that Charlie normally plays. That was Charlie's. Uh, that was all been scripted, kind of, with Charlie in mind doing it. And you know, Caleb came in and uh, and executed very well. That's that's Charlie's backup. And man, he came in and knew what to do, how to do it, um, and and did a real fine job. I mean, he's very smart. Uh, He's, it's important to him. He works hard at it. Uh, he's got a really good mentor in Charlie as far as the, you know, the football and how to go about it in a very business-like, professional manner, and, and he executed at a high level. We talked about the defense holding the Pioneers to a minus 20 yards yeah. rushing, eight sacks, 16 TFLs. How underrated are they, or how good are they? They're probably the best in the conference. Um, the, the statistics say they're one of the top two. It's them in Langston. Um, they're, they're really good. I mean, Coach Duckworth's done a fantastic job with the defense. They, we're in a very much of an attack defense, um, but we're going to come at you in a lot of different ways. There's not going to be lined up and you know where we are all the time. Uh, and, the, and the kids have bought in and they're really, I mean, they're tackling well. We're not missing a lot of tackles. You know, knock on wood. Um, they're, you know, we give up a big play every now and then, but for the most part, there's a lot of veterans over there and the freshmen that we do have are really talented. Um, and they've played in big programs. So they, they roll right in and fit, and, and they're competing. There's a lot of competition to even get on the field, especially for the defensive line. Um, and even in the secondary, you've got to really bring it in practice. And you'll see new faces, you know, each week will come in to play uh, just because they've competed at, at that level in, in practice and they've earned that spot. And so you'll see some new guys come in and, and get a chance. Is there anybody on D that has surprised you so far? Sean Tolbert <clears throat> surprised me. He's, um, he missed summer. He was working a lot academically. He had to get caught up on some credits. We didn't know if he'd be able to or not because it was quite a bit, but he did. He did a great job with it. Uh, he came in, and, and he's been playing well. I mean, we started him at end, and then we moved him over to Bandit, which is the other end, then moved him inside, and he just, he's like, wherever you want to put me, I'm, I'm ready to go. I just, I'm glad to be here. I want to play ball, uh, and he's performed at a high level. You know, I tease him. I call him the coaster because he looks like he's just coasting all the time. But he, uh, he ramps up for games. Um, he's, he's been a real pleasant surprise on the D-line. Kobe's come back from his injury of last year. He looks really good in there. You know, we moved Joe Thomas from linebacker to D-in and some bandit stuff. And, you know, he's very, you know, you don't want to compare him to Micah Parsons, but in, as far as his skill set for our level, He's kind of that guy that can play in space as a linebacker, but he's really effective when you bring him in as a DN uh, pass rush guy. He's, he's just he's a great football player. So there's been, some, there's been some pleasant surprises over there for sure. We talk about offense, defense a lot, special teams. I know you have a lot of love for your special teams mm -hmm. unit, right? Oh, yeah. I love, hey, our special teams had a really good game the other day. You know, we have Alizé Thomas uh, came in and blocked the punt. 
um, did a great job. I mean, he got skinny through that hole in a hurry, and next thing you know, he redirected two steps, and he's, he's blocking the punt. Um, and then we had another opportunity when Kareem Walker came off the edge. He got there so fast, the punter was able to pull the ball down, avoid him, and then Victor Dehunsi came from the backside and got a piece of the block, even from over there. Francisco uh, Castillo had eight touchbacks. And that wasn't even close. I mean, they were hitting like the back line. He was banging it. Uh, and then, you know, Benitez has been so solid with his, his uh, field goals and such. And um, he missed a 57-yarder by a couple yards. And it, it had plenty of length. It just, he hooked it a little bit with the wind. And then Jason Price came in after A.J. Bob had a, you know, a little injury out there. And um, he did great. Jason Price came in and had some big returns. He was, he was two, return, two blocks away from breaking two long kickoff returns for touchdowns. Or one, I'm sorry, one punt and one kickoff return. That, I mean, just really, really close. So those guys on special teams are, are doing a great job. And, you know, Coach Ryan Leitches has come in and taken over in that spot. And, man, he's, he's done a great job. He's sharpened up that pencil, and he's doing some really, you know, really, really good things. Next up is Sagu, Saturday, 6 p.m. at Farrington. They're 2-2 two and two overall, 1-2 and two in the sack. They're coming off a 47-20 win over Arkansas Baptist. How do you see the Lions? Really good. Really good. They've, you know, they've got um, they've got the number two Russian defense right behind us. Um, their their D line is is really good. The nose guard Belcher is he's maybe the best overall D lineman in the conference. Uh, they're linebacking core. They come. They're aggressive. They're fast. Uh, secondary is is going to be tough to pick on. You know, they've got so many good guys back there. Offensively, they have a freshman quarterback, so they he's you know he's still learning his way, but he's very very talented. Uh, O-line is, is starting to come together, and they got the best running back from last year, Dudick, and so they're dangerous, man. I mean, it's, it's a dangerous football team we're going to play, uh, they're, and they're getting better right now. They're starting to really, you know, starting to ramp up, and we're going to we're gonna have to be sharp, and we're going to have to put together another, like we did this last week. It was a complete team effort. We were really solid special teams, really good on defense, really efficient on offense. If we can do that again, we'll be, we'll be fine. If we start to sputter in one of those areas, they're very capable of taking advantage of it and, and really putting us in a bad spot. Yeah, Dudek, you mentioned, he had 243 <clears throat> yards against Arkansas Baptist last week. That was a yeah. single yeah. record for, for a game, 7.1, four TDs. And when you have a back like that, you know that's going to be a stud. Do you do like some coaches, like Bill Belichick does, take away a certain strength? either on offense or defense. In this case, it would be Dudek. Do you focus on him, but all the while being wary of other players that might hurt you on offense? Yes. Yes. Just in a word, yes. I mean, you always want to take away something from their offense. You'll want to take away something from their defense if you can. Uh, special it's all the same. I mean, everybody wants to focus on it. It's just the defense does it, but offensively the same way. Just like if, you know, there's, there's a certain area that we need to attack, let's attack that. Let's not be hard-headed and go into the strength of what it is. Um, and he's the strength of their offense. I mean, he is a great player, and we've got to make sure we contain him to have a chance. If we don't contain Dudek, we're in trouble Saturday. If we don't slow him down and contain him, we are going to be in trouble, no question. Just like on special teams, if they have a special returner, guess what? He didn't get the ball. Let's kick it out of bounds. Let's kick it away from him. So you always want to take away what you uh, see as their strength or their very best player or their very best weapon or whatever you know, dimension it is that you want to limit don't let that beat you. And so that's going to be a big focal point for us. And you mentioned their defense, which is one of the tops in, in AIA. Mm -hmm. Now, do you stick pretty much to your general game plan, or would you have a game plan that would try to beat that top defense? We're going we're gonna to have to make some adjustments. Um, we're not going to do what everybody else does. I don't want to give away too much, right. but we will, there will be some, some adjustments in various ways that we attack them because we do see some things that we can do to hopefully give ourselves a better opportunity. Um, we can't be stubborn. You know, we can't line up and do what other people have done and who did not have success. Um, so we will be doing some things differently to kind of, you know, hopefully take, not I wouldn't say take advantage, but to be, have more success. In the NFL yesterday, there was a number of questionable decisions made by head coaches. We won't mention any names, but in a couple of games I can think of. So it's, Time to stump Coach Joe. <laughs> okay. Are there any regrets or mistakes that you made as far as play calls? And you don't have to mention the team, you know, unless you want to. But are there any mistakes or calls that you regret making that you could have 
think, well, dang, why didn't I do this instead of that? Yeah, there, of course. I mean, there's, I, that's every game, that there's something. This past game, I can't think of any because we were hitting on all cylinders. Um, but, you know, you, in, in the Ottawa game, I can't remember any that I didn't. I mean, we went for it on fourth down. We got it. Um, the field goals, we, it was so far to have to go for it. We got, you know, we, we took the points. Um, I would say at Arizona, Arizona Christian game, we, we didn't go for it one time on fourth down, and then we missed the field goal. I regret that. Um, there's a few times in my career where I should have maybe gone for it um, and didn't, but usually it's, uh, it's when you go for it and don't get it, you have no regret, you know what I mean? Um, so I would say those are the situations that you, you think about that you know, haunt you, I would say. And, um, you know, the other day we were a little over aggressive right before the half. Uh, we were going to go for, we had 25 seconds, about 65 yard field. Um, we worked so much on, on trying the two minute offense or, or really compressed time frames to get down for a field goal or whatever we were going to work on it. And Dalton threw an interception. Well, going back, I can regret it, but there was a read that he could have made that would have been different outcome. But you know, normally I would have just knelt on the ball, go out, and we get the ball second half. But I wanted to work on that situation of we got to go score a field goal in a very short time frame in case we need it later. So it was a perfect practice scenario within a game situation. I regretted a little bit at the time. They ended up getting a shorter field. They missed the field goal. Defense held. Um, but I hate to put our defense in a bad spot. Right. Uh, but it would, I wouldn't call that questionable. I'd call it maybe a little overaggressive. But I would, rather, I would much rather get it, um, you know, worry about being overaggressive than not aggressive enough. You know, because to me, that's when you can really hurt yourself. In your career, what do you think would be the biggest one that you've ever made, biggest regret, or still haunts you to this day? Oh, boy, that's a tough one. Um, I would have to say going back, I want to say it was one of the semifinals. Um, it was, no, it was a final game. Um, we threw a pick, and, and it was in right before overtime. We, we could have gone to overtime. We could, have, we could have gone ahead and tried to kick a field goal against Prestonwood when I was at Nolan, um, and we ended up throwing a pick and lost the game at that point, and we lost by three, and that would have been – I want to say it was 10, because then we would have won 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It had been a six-year run of, t of championships. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we, we could have run the ball and set up a field goal, but it's never, it's never a sure thing on field goals, ever, you know. But that, that was probably the one that, that comes to mind that I remember uh, that, you know, we ended up throwing a pick, and it was a good play call, I thought. But maybe I was being a little overly aggressive. I just want to go ahead and win the game because right. we had like 12 seconds in the timeout. So I was going to get at least one, th one shot in the end zone, um, maybe two. And, but that was the one that probably would haunt me, I would say, if I can remember right, in a, big, in a big game situation. Well, hopefully this weekend against Sagu there won't be any. <laughs> Let's you make all the right decisions. Well, you try to. And, and you know, the, we have conversations about it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, the prior, I'm the decision maker on going for it or – um, you know, punting or kicking or field goals or whatever, and, and uh, you know, do we really drop the hammer down here or do we need to play a little more conservative because it's a really tight game? Um, so that's the things that I do. I, I, I manage the game in the time more than anybody else. Of course, I have input from upstairs and, and even down the field. And I always ask, you know, like Fran, I'll ask him, man, you feel good about, you know, three yards? You, you feel good about two? You, how you feel about this? It, he always says, I, he goes, you do what you need to do and I'll call the play. And with Duckworth, same thing, you know, they're driving down a little bit. Do you need a timeout to settle them down? And he goes, well, yes or no, and, and we talk about those things. But I always try to give them – I always try to find out what they feel comfortable with or what looks good to them or what they think will work because ultimately they're making that play call or they're making that, you know, hey, I need my guys over here and settle them down. Um, so, you know, that's uh, – and our communication with that, our, throughout our staff has been outstanding. It's been really good. Cool shirts. I want to compliment you on the, <laughs> well, on the powder, the Charger thanks. powder blue shirts. Thanks. I know a couple of weeks ago, I think it was even before the classical, the global classical yeah. game, um, I saw Roses, Coach Roses in the long sleeve one. Yeah. So whose idea was to bring in the powder blue? Well, you know, we had them last year, actually. Oh. It, uh, we had them last year. It's an alternate color for us. It's not our main color, obviously. It's, our main color is navy, white, and, and gold. Right. Um, but what happened was 
during the COVID year when we had to shut down everything, um, it was time for us to get new uniforms. Our Adidas was really falling apart. It was time to get Nike, um, and they had a buy one, get one special. So we got a set of, of white, a set of navy, a set of gold, and a set of what do we get? Well, everybody else on campus already had powder blue going, and for me, I'm, I'm neutral on it. I, I like it now, but at the time, I'm like, well, does people really want the powder blue? And apparently our kids loved it. I mean, they were yeah. ecstatic that we were getting it. And I just thought it was so weird to me, and I guess it's generational. To me, I was like, it, it looks good, but I don't, to me, I love the navy, I love the white, I love the gold. Um, you know, some people were talking about, well, you need to get black. I'm not, I'm not doing black. Right. Good. It's not us. Yeah. We ought to get gray, it's not us. But, but with everybody else on campus, our other sports doing the powder blue, I just wanted to fall in line with what they were doing. It looks good. You know, we got them last year. We only worn them a couple times. And that was kind of my, my strategy was to get, you know, the four sets. So we altered them. They'll last a lot longer. And if you're going to get it, why not get them at a time when you can afford it at that time? And it worked out good. But it is good. It is a good looking. I appreciate it. The uniforms are Coach Joe Prudhomme. I'll have to get it. <laughs> I'll, look, I'll look, see if I have your size up okay, there. Okay, good. I'll good. An XL for Jimmy the Saint would be yeah. fine. Coach, thank you very much, and yep. good luck against yep. Sagu on Saturday. It'll thank be you. 6 p.m. kickoff thank at you. Farrington Field for head coach Joe Prudhomme. Yep. I'm Jimmy the Saint Christopher saying talk to you next time on First and Ten.